So I've been asked about how I do vCarve inlays. So I've set up this little video and demonstration of how I set them up in CarveCo. Here you can see the vectors of a German Shepherd that I'm going to be working on soon. And you'll see that I'm going to select them. And then we will make the pocket which is generally the easier part of the process. I'll select the V-carve and I'll have a start depth of 0 and a maximum depth of 0 0.20. Then I will select a carving tool. In this case we're going to use the 15 degree because we want sharp corners and we're going to go a little bit you know, deeper. I'll refresh the vectors to make sure there's no issue and then I will select a roughing tool of an eighth inch down cut bit. The material thickness in my case is one and a half inches but that's not a big deal. It can be whatever your thickness is. And then I will click calculate. Here you can see the simulation with the shaded areas of what is going to be calculated. And then you'll see the extra parts with the 15 degree bit because it has to get in to the smaller sections and make those nice sharp corners. Then I'm going to check the simulation so I'm going to right click and click simulate all toolpaths. Once you do that you're going to see that the pocket is nicely formed and then you can move it around and double check but you can see how the carve will come out but you see the pocket and now we will have to make the inlay that goes into it. So I'm going to turn off the simulation, turn off all the toolpaths and then I'm going to get a new canvas ready for the inlay part. Casey taught me a trick about opening up a second window next to your original so that you can do your uh, inlay and then you can copy and paste your vectors which is what you're going to see me do here shortly. So if you right click the carve code button you'll see that you can get a new model open and again the model size I make it the same but it doesn't have to be uh, just so that your vectors will fit because your inlay piece may not be the same piece of wood um, same size piece of wood as that you were using so I'll go back to my original model I'll select the vectors right click I'll click copy and then I open up and go back to the blank one and I will click paste you'll see I have the exact same vectors but if I leave them that way I will not be able to fit my plug into the pocket. So what you're going to do is you're going to end up selecting these vectors and then you're going to click the mirror tool and then you are going to flip it over the center horizontal and you'll see that the vectors have changed. Now you're also going to see that we're going to add a rectangle around this vector so that we can end up carving the negative so that it will fit into our pocket. Here we're going to select all the vectors and we're going to set up a bunch of toolpaths. Now I do two to three sets of toolpaths and you'll see why in a second. So the first one is going to have a start depth of 0 0.03 and a max depth of 0 0.05. Now the way CarveCo sees it, it's going to add those two together so really it's going to carve to a depth of 0.03. 08, the 0.03 plus the 0.05. Again, I picked the 15 degree V bit. I refresh the and I pick a roughing tool for the eighth inch down cut. And then I'll calculate. After I define the material, in my case, I'll use 0.7. Yours could be a little bit thinner, could be thicker, but again, that is totally your call. Once you click OK, it will calculate and you will see what we get. You'll see that it is a complete negative of what we were originally carving. So this, if we were to just stop here, would fit right in. Now we're going to close this and we're going to turn off all the toolpaths. And then we will do this exact same set of toolpaths again. So here I turn off the toolpaths, the vectors are still selected, I'll take the V-carve again and this time I'm going to do 0.10 and the maximum depth is 
0.05 again I picked the exact same tools and then I will click calculate it's going to look exactly the same and it should and we're going to do this one last time with a final pass of 0.15 start depth and a maximum depth of 0.05 which will equal the 0 0.20 which is the pocket depth that we initially carved on the first board so here we have a 15 degree again and then the eighth inch down cut and you're going to see that we're going to simulate all the tool paths as soon as it finishes calculating we're going to simulate all the tool paths and you're going to see that we have a simulated plug for our new board again right click and you'll see simulate all tool paths I will always change the simulation material to a wood material so I get a better look because obviously I'm carving in metal sorry in wood and not metal and then I will know that it is proper now the reason I have three sets of tool paths is I don't want the eighth inch bit going from zero to point two in one setup so this is the way that I have figured out how to get it to run multiple passes and you're gonna see that there is an eighth inch bit three times and what I'm going to do because Carfco allows it is we'll let you group those tool paths together by bit so therefore I'll scoot up the eighth inch bit and then I will have all the eighth inch bit together and all the 15 degree V bits together you can leave these as is in some cases you can actually eliminate one of the v-bit paths if you choose to and then you can save it and you will have a finished uh, v-carve inlay you need to remember that the 15 degree bit is very small so if you take too much at one time you could end up with some chatter or some splintering also depending on your machine if you have any questions regarding what is here or on any of the other inlays you can email me or put a comment in the video and I will be sure to get back with you. Please like and subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it.